Hi everyone and welcome to the next Earth Science review video. This is for Unit 3 Astronomy. This is going to be a quick overview of the reasons for the seasons. So there's going to be a little bit of content and then a couple of practice questions that you could pause the video and see how you're doing. Alright, so here we go. The first thing I want to talk about really quick is the Foucault's Pendulum. Uh, really the only two main things you got to know about this without going into detail about how it works is that it proves that the Earth is rotating and in examples like what you see in the picture with pegs getting knocked down throughout the process, the pegs get knocked down in a clockwise fashion because the Earth is rotating counterclockwise. So those are the two facts you got to know for Foucault. And there is also a couple of facts that you got to know for the Coriolis effect, which include it's the second proof of rotation and the wind and water will curve right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere, and this is because the Earth is rotating. All right, so those were just two honorable mentions, so on the way to the reasons for the seasons. Okay, so as you could see in this little picture here, there's three main reasons for the seasons that I wrote on the top left. The first reason is the Earth's tilt, which you could see with the yellow line on the picture, and the second is the Earth revolving around the sun, which you can also see happening in the picture. And thirdly, if you notice that yellow line, which is the tilt, that is always oriented in the same direction, which is called parallelism. So the tilt is always facing towards the left side of your screen. All right, so those are the three big ones. So now we're gonna sort of dive a little bit deeper into how they work. Okay, so as you can see, we have a diagram of the Earth in four different locations. So this is sort of the cookie cutter example of what you're going to see on uh, quizzes or tests about the seasons. So the first thing you want to do when you see this image is first identify which one is the summer. So in order to do that, you're going to figure out which one is tilted towards the sun. So you should do that now. So we'll label this one one, two, three, and four. So right now, in your head, see if you could do it. Which one is tilted towards the sun? So hopefully you got answer number one, which is over here. This one is tilted towards the sun, because there's the axis right there, which is tilted towards the sun. So this is going to be our summer. This happens on June 21st, when we are in this position. And we have our longest day of the year. 15 hours a day and 9 hours a night. And interestingly enough, the North Pole at this point is getting 24 hours of daylight. Okay? And the South Pole here is getting 24 hours of darkness. So it's a little fun fact. This is also called the summer solstice. And now we can find out where winter is. Winter is going to be directly across at number three over here. So this is called the winter solstice. And this happens on December 21st. And on this day, the hours are opposite. So the North Pole is going to get its 24 hours of darkness and the South Pole gets 24 hours of daylight. And it's the shortest day of the year. It only has nine hours of daylight, 15 hours of darkness. So sometimes on these models, they can ask about fall or spring. But it's hard to know which one is fall and spring, two or four. Well, if you know the Earth revolves counterclockwise, we revolve counterclockwise. We also rotate counterclockwise. So you'll see an arrow like that spinning to the left. The season after summer, which would go this way, is going to be fall. So this is called the autumnal equinox. And the reason it's called the equinox is because it has 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night. It's perfect. So we're going to revolve then, and then here would be winter, and then we revolve and we got spring. That's called the vernal equinox. Again, 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night, and then we're back to June. So the months, if you were to put the months in here, so July would be here, August would be here, then you got September, which is 923 for autumnal. And then October, Earth would be there. November, Earth would be here. December 21st would be here. And then we got January, 
February. The vernal equinox is March 21st. And then we got April, May, and then back to June. So this is generally how this chart works. The big thing to just note is the tilts. You wanna be able to identify which one is tilted towards and which one is tilted away. And then you'll be able to figure them all out. The next diagram I wanna talk about is this earth here. So generally, we're gonna talk about where the locations are, specific ones, that are gonna have direct sunlight. Now, direct sunlight can also be known as angle of insulation, N-S-O-L-A-T-I-O-N. This is amount of sunlight. So a direct angle of insulation would equal a 90 degree angle, which means it's going to be hotter at the areas that are gonna get the more direct sunlight. And that's where the tilt comes in. So check this out. If the sun is over here, sometimes the direct ray is hitting the equator right here. The direct ray hits the equator at 90 degree angle on March 21st and September 23rd. So that means if you're standing at the equator on March 21st and September 23rd, you would see the sun directly above your head at solar noon at the point at which the sun is the highest during the day. Okay? So sometimes the direct sunlight is here at the Tropic of Cancer. This is 23.5 degrees north. That happens on June 21st. So that means if you're standing at the Tropic of Cancer on June 21st, you would see the sun directly over your head at solar noon. And finally, sometimes the sun is directly overhead down here at the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23.5 degrees south. So that means if you're at the Tropic of Capricorn on, this happens on December 21st, you would see the sun directly over your head at solar noon, which is when the sun is at its highest point. So this is really, really important. There is no other place on the whole planet except for in this zone here where the sun is gonna be directly overhead. There's no other spot. So up here where we are somewhere, this is not accurate, but New York is gonna be above 23.5 degrees. New York in particular would never see the sun directly above its head because that only happens in this zone. Okay? All right, we're moving on. Couple practice questions here. So again, check out the question, see if you can get the answer right, and then I'll go over the explanation. So this one says, which diagram best represents the regions of Earth in sunlight on June 21st and December 21st? So the NP indicates the North Pole and the shading represents the night. Okay, so you want one to say June 21st and one to be oriented as December 21st. So take a second to figure it out. Okay. So let's do the June 21st. On June 21st, we need the sun to uh, the earth to be tilted towards the sun. So this one is good. This one is bad. This one is good. And this one is bad because this is neither one. This would be spring or fall. This would be winter. Okay, so now we got to see the Decembers. We need the December to be tilted away. So this December is tilted towards. This is wrong. And then this one is tilted away. So yay, C. C is the good answer. This one's tilted towards, and this one's tilted away. The next question here says, base your answer to the following question on the diagram. It represents the Earth in a position around the sun, the sun's rays at solar noon in the direction to Polaris. Letters A through D represent different positions. So which position is receiving the sun's rays from directly overhead at solar noon? Hopefully you paused it and you thought about it. Now you would first try to figure out where is this tilted? This is the whole earth, the axis here, is tilted towards the sun's rays this way. So that means this is probably June 21st. And on June 21st, the direct rays hit the Tropic of Cancer. So that would be location B. Now if you were to see it like this, 
if if the sun rays were over here and you saw the earth like this this is a bad picture but it doesn't matter if it was tilted that way you would pick the tropic of capricorn because this would be december because we're tilted away from the sun in december which location on the earth wow speaking of which there it is on december 21st you're going to have the tropic of capricorn as the direct rays and if you're confused on questions like this go back in the video to this little chart and study this june 21st tropic of cancer 321 923 the equator 1221 tropic of capricorn you're gonna have to remember them next one if the tilt of the earth was increased from 23.5 to 30 summers would become what and then it asks about winter so if we're tilted more towards the sun, the sun's going to be more direct in New York State. So if you have more direct sun in the summer, that means that your summers would be hotter. So it's not going to be A or B. And also, if you're tilted more, that means in, when the winter time comes around, you'd be tilted more away. So winters would actually become colder. So the answer would be C. Now you could say the opposite question. What if there was no tilt? If there was no tilt, that would mean you would have less extreme temperatures, meaning summers would be cooler and winters would be warmer. Which in that, whoa, I don't know what happened there. In that case, if summers would be cooler and winters would be warmer, if there was no tilt, this would be like the equinoxes, like spring or fall all the time. The weather would be like in the 70s all the time, which in my opinion would not be that bad. Just kidding, I like my summer. The lowest surface temperatures in the southern hemisphere usually occur during what month? Southern hemisphere. This is always gonna be the opposite of the northern hemisphere so the lowest temperatures in the northern hemisphere happen in December which means the lowest temperatures in the southern hemisphere happen in June or July so C is the best answer they're getting their winter in July and they get their summer in January or December around there So the southern hemisphere is always the opposite season as the northern. And we got one last question. During how many days of a calendar year is the sun directly overhead at noon in New Jersey? New Jersey, our next door neighbor. New Jersey is near New York. Which means, is that between 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south? And there's the equator. Is it in this area that we talked about? No, New York's all the way up here, so this is never going to happen. D is the best. All right, so that's your reasons for the seasons overview. I will talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.